Hey everyone, I'm going to talk about cues of safety on my neuroscience blog. And I've been talking about how we can become integrated and what integration is. And a cue of safety is a way that we can uh, increase our level of integration and not go down our ladder in those handouts where I talk about the vagus nerve. I have other videos you can look at where I explain the sympathetic and the parasympathetic and then the social engagement system. So a cue of safety, if you can imagine this ladder, actually I have the handout here. Here's the ladder where we're in safety at the top. And then what happens is you see a cue of danger. Uh, so an example is I was talking with a client and she heard a lecture by a physician who was talking about toxins and how people can have what's called biofilm, collect when you have implants. And so she noticed at the end of the lecture that she had a, a knee replacement and she was having more pain in her knee. And we were talking about whether or not there was something going on in her nervous system that was maybe leading to that. And we broke it down. So when you're starting to have a cue of danger, first you have to figure out what is the language that it's using, even if it's coming from somatic kind of languaging, you have to kind of put in the language. So in this case, we thought it through and it was something like, this is what the elephant thinks. If I have biofilm because of my implant, then I could die. You know, that's where, that's the cue of danger. And then what we want to do is we want to cue the nervous system to safety. That's what a cue of safety is. So what that would be is, there are lots of different things. What is it in your life that gives you energy? that calms you down. It can be anything. It can be if you have a really wonderful memory that you can just recall, uh, a celebratory moment. Uh, one resource for me I've mentioned on this blog is trees. Uh, so I used to drive past this one tree and I would go, big mama tree. Like I would actually do that. And so I have actually the felt sense memory of that. And so I might go into the bathroom and do that. I know it sounds goofy, um, but I change my nervous system state. I give myself a cue of safety by remembering something positive like that. So that's, we can give ourselves cues of safety, and then we can also get cues of safety from other people. So another example would be, um, let's, let's say I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to go outside. I have a friend. Her name is Sally. I'm going to say, Sally, you know, I'm feeling kind of self-conscious, but I feel a little bit kind of geeked up or nervous. And I know that like when I have a little bit of touch, it calms me down. So I was wondering if you'd be willing to just kind of put your hand on mine for like a minute. And let's say she says yes. So that's a cue of safety. So you're sitting down and she puts her hand on yours. And the reason why this is so important, it's not just that you asked, which is important and you're using the social engagement system and other people to help regulate your nervous system, but you're going to want to do two things. You're going to ask for that need. And when it gets met, you're really going to pay attention to how you feel having your need met. What does it feel like? And I, I know that personally, I find touch extremely helps regulate the body. Sometimes it can be easier for us to co-regulate rather than self-regulate or self-soothe ourselves. So that's a second way that we can get a cue of safety. And there's just an infinite number of ways. I'm going to keep bringing them in, but learning how to accept cues of safety, see cues of safety, ask for cues of safety, give ourselves cues of safety. It's a way to shift your gaze and it unlocks your brain's capacity for excellent executive function. The power of even just beginning to see cues of safety instead of cues of danger is so profound. And the last thing I'll end on when you're doing memory reconsolidation is a third thing you could do besides giving yourself a cue, getting a cue from someone else is five hours later, you replay the whole scene where you got triggered. You remember the cue of danger. You remember the cue of safety. You remember the feeling in your body of being soothed through the help of someone else and you end on a positive memory. So then you're, what you're doing is you're creating a new meaning experience what you're doing is you're downloading in your nervous system the memory of being soothed as opposed to the memory of being triggered. So what you would do is like five hours later, you would remember your cues of safety a second time. So you're actually giving yourself another cue of safety as a third cue of safety where you recall it. Because what happens for a lot of people who are constantly in 
this sympathetic, this danger, this level two, is their elephant is giving them tons of cues of danger and they're just kind of stuck in this low grade nervous system arousal. And the way we help heal that is we wedge in cues of safety. So that's enough for today. I will continue to include information on this and uh, write me if you have any questions. So thanks everyone.